Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War is an American congressionally chartered organization, and the legal successor to the Grand Army of the Republic It is the Union Veterans Association counterpart to the Sons of Confederate Veterans. Founded in November 1881 as the Sons of Veterans of the United States of America, it was originally one of several competing organizations of descendants of Union veterans. By 1886, others had joined the SUVCW. The organization adopted its current name in 1925. At its peak in 1904, membership in the Sons of Veterans exceeded 200,000. SUVCW currently has 6,360 male members, to whom it distributes its quarterly publication The Banner. Local camps decorate veterans' graves on Memorial Day and have activities to preserve history and commemorate military service. The SUVCW headquarters are located in the National Civil War Museum in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. History Nineteenth century The SUVCW, originally named the Sons of Veterans of the United States of America, was founded by Major Augustus P. Davis in November 1881 to ensure the preservation of principles of the Grand Army of the Republic and to provide assistance to veterans. It is based on the principles of fraternity, charity and loyalty. In July 1877, Davis made his first proposal for an organization of Sons of GAR members to General Alexander Hayes Post III in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. The members rejected his idea, but Davis was persistent. He brought it up at least three times during the next four years and personally started a young boys' drum and bugle corps. Post members rejected that as well. Finally in September 1881, the Post three members took a neutral position on Davis's latest proposal. They would not endorse his plan, nor would they oppose it. Davis wanted to organize the Sons of Gar members into a military style organization whose objectives were similar to those of the Gar, and whose members would provide assistance to those in the Gar. He proposed membership to be limited to the eldest living son of a Gar member. Davis envisioned the SV as not only a fraternal, patriotic, and charitable organization, but as an organized military reserve to be called upon in time of war. Members of the Sons of Veterans wore military-style uniforms and practiced tactics and drill. Davis stated his vision for the SV as follows The Sons of Veterans is destined to become the great military organization of the country, that glory of its supremacy, that healing of the sense when its national hymn are sung that none other not thus reared can know or feel. Through this organization the declining days of the Union veteran will be made pleasant, his record of service to his country preserved, his memory honored, patriotism promoted. While if the dire necessity of the nation should dictate, the sons of veterans, uniformed, drilled and equipped would come at once to her defense with the glory of their fathers surrounding them, each heart pulsating in unison with the rising and falling of the nation's emblem. And who would be powerful enough to prevail against such a host? He held the first organization meeting November 12, 1881, in the Gar Post 3 meeting room at the Old City Hall in Pittsburgh. He had gathered a group of 11 boys, who adopted his proposed constitution, rules, regulations, and ritual, and formed the Sons of Veterans of Pennsylvania SVPA. They elected officers to begin the organization today known as the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War. Davis filed the Articles of Incorporation for the Sons of Veterans of Pennsylvania on December 28, 1881, which were approved by the Court of Common Pleas the same day. The Commonwealth of Pennsylvania approved the Charter on January 12, 1882. A rival organization organized at the other end of the state was called the Philadelphia Sons of Veterans PSV. The PSV was started on September 29, 1878, when Anna M. Ross Camp No. 1 was founded in Philadelphia. The PSV was started by Comrade James P. Holt of Anna Ross Camp 94 of the GAR in Philadelphia. On October 15, 1878, the Planning Committee presented a proposed constitution and rules for the operation of the Cadet Corps to Post 94. These were approved and the name, Sons of Veterans, was adopted here and after. Philadelphia Sons of Veterans. Other posts in Pennsylvania, New Jersey and New York likewise established Cadet Corps. In 1879 the Earp family of Massachusetts formed camps in that state as well as in Missouri and New Jersey. This organization also used the name, 
Sons of Veterans hereafter. Earp Sons of Veterans. In July 1880, the Earp Sons of Veterans disbanded, and all camps joined the Philadelphia Sons of Veterans. A division state level organization was formed by the Philadelphia Sons of Veterans. On February 22, 1882, the Philadelphia Sons of Veterans formed a national organization, following the request of the Earp Sons of Veterans, which had not been accounted for in the division formations of the Philadelphia Sons of Veterans in 1880. In March 1882 the SVPA changed its name to Sons of Veterans of the United States of America to better reflect their nationwide status and growth. Major Davis devoted his time, energy and money to expanding chapters of the Sons of Veterans of Pennsylvania. Camps were formed throughout Pennsylvania, eastern Ohio, northern West Virginia and southern New York. By mid-year, the need for a formal organization within Pennsylvania became clear. On July 4, 1882, the Division of Pennsylvania was created and the first division encampment held in Pittsburgh. Throughout the summer of 1882, the organization grew geometrically. By fall, there was a pressing need for a national organization. On October 18, 1882, the first national encampment was held in Pittsburgh. The Constitution, rules and regulations proposed by Davis were adopted. As of July 1, 1884, the organization had grown to a membership of over 20,000. In July 1883 a special meeting was held in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, by the Philadelphia Sons of Veterans. Because of dissension among the camps arising from failure to issue charters and incorrect record-keeping, 33 camps of the Philadelphia Sons of Veterans withdrew from that organization and joined the Sons of Veterans of the United States of America. In August 1886 the two remaining camps faithful to the Philadelphia Sons of Veterans joined the Sons of Veterans of the United States of America. Thus ended the PSV. These two camps were Anna M. Ross Camp No. 1 and Ellis Camp No. 9. Membership in the SV grew rapidly, and membership at the 1890 National Encampment was reported at 145,000 which can be compared to the membership of the GAR in the same year of about 400,000. The SV had a fairly complex relationship with the GAR. While GAR members generally believed there should be a worthy organization for their sons to join, they believed that the GAR membership should be limited to veterans. The GAR gave its approval to the SV, but it would not make the SV part of the GAR. On July 25, 1883, the GAR National Encampment recognized the SV as "...entitled to the confidence and support of all comrades of the Grand Army of the Republic." Final and complete acceptance by the GAR came in 1888. In his report to the National Encampment of the GAR, Commander-in-Chief John P. Ray stated, it will be but a short period until our ranks are so meager and the surviving comrades so weighed down with the burden of years that our organization will have ceased to be an active force in the work of loyal love and charity which it has ordained. The tender ceremonies of Memorial Day will then be performed by others or not at all. It seems to me that it would be the part of wisdom for us while yet in our vigor to establish such relationship between our order and the sons of veterans as to properly recognize the organization. As a result of Commander-in-Chief Ray's presentation the GAR adopted the following resolution Resolved, that this encampment endorse the objects and purposes of the Order of Sons of Veterans of the United States of America and hereby give the Order the official recognition of the Grand Army of the Republic and recommend that comrades aid and encourage the institution of camps of the Sons of Veterans of the USA. In contrast to the 1890 SV membership numbers above, membership of the GAR in 1890 was reported to have been 490,000. Topic: 20th century. In 1903, it was decided to divide the Sons of Veterans' civil and military functions. A new organization was formed called the Sons of Veterans Reserve SVR, which conducted the military training. As the SVR was not a state militia organization, it was not integrated into the National Guard in the early 20th century. Today the SVR serves as the uniformed ceremonial component of the SUVCW, and only SUVCW members in good standing can become members of the SVR. Membership in the SV peaked in 1904, when it was reported at more than 200,000. This was also the height of reconciliation celebrations of white veterans of the Civil War. Membership dramatically declined in following years. 
It may have been because many of the men served in the Spanish-American War and preferred to be active in the United Spanish War Veterans USWV, founded in 1902. Also, as members of the SV were now in their thirties, they needed to devote more time to work and families. Another possible explanation is that war service had ended whatever romantic vision of military life they had. In 1925 members changed the name to the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War Sons of Veterans of the Spanish-American and First World Wars had tried to join, but members decided their organization should be exclusively for descendants of Union veterans of the Civil War. On February 13, 1954 Albert Wilson, the last surviving member of the GAR, deeded all remaining property to the SUVCW. He wrote, the meaning and intent of this conveyance is to convey to said Commander-in-Chief, Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War, all post and department records of the Grand Army of the Republic and it is my express wish and desire that said grantee shall use its best endeavors to return said records to the communities where Grand Army posts were located, so far as possible, for the use and benefit of the communities where such posts were located. On August 20, 1954 Congress enacted Public Law 605 which incorporated the SUVCW with a congressional charter. Among the incorporators were General of the Army Douglas MacArthur and Major General Ulysses S. Grant, III. Through most of the 20th century, the SUVCW experienced a slow decline in membership reflecting a general trend in American society away from fraternal and patriotic organizations. After showings of the widely watched and acclaimed PBS television series, The Civil War 1990, membership grew in the SUVCW. In recent years the SUVCW has worked to prevent the sale to private collectors of Civil War period artillery pieces removed from monuments erected by the GAR. Topic. 21st century As of late 2007 the SUVCW had 26 departments containing one or more states and five states with a camp at large covering the entire state. It is headed by a commander-in-chief, elected annually, who oversees the operation of the departments, as well as a department at large, a national membership at large, and over 200 community-based camps. Membership was estimated at approximately 7,500. Relationship with the Sons of Confederate Veterans The SUVCW has a long-standing friendly relationship with the Sons of Confederate Veterans, referring to them as, "...our Confederate cousins," and has conducted a number of joint meetings and joint resolutions with the SCV. The Commander-in-Chief of the SUVCW has attended the SCV annual reunion on a number of occasions, including in 1995, 1996, 1997, and 2005. The SUVCW cooperates with the SCV in preserving Civil War monuments, graves, and markers, and also, in a formal resolution passed in August 2000, opposed the removal of any Confederate monuments or markers to those gallant soldiers in the former Confederate states. In 2017, the National Encampment held once again in Lansing, ME, approved a revised policy toward the Confederate battle flag that strongly condemn ed. the use of any American or Confederate flag by any and all hate groups. Quote, the resolution also pointedly supported the flying of all U.S. and CSA flags to national battlefield sites and to be honored publicly in museums as our authentic archival documentation of our national past. Membership Full membership in the SUVCW is open to any man, 14 years of age and older 6 to 14 for junior members, who 1. is directly descended from a soldier, sailor, marine or member of the Revenue Cutter Service or directly descended from a brother, sister, half-brother, or half-sister of such soldier, etc. who was regularly mustered and served honorably in, was honorably discharged from, or died in the service of, the Army, Navy, Marine Corps or Revenue Cutter Service of the United States of America or in such state regiments called to active service and was subject to the orders of United States General Officers, between April 12, 1861 and April 9, 1865, 2, has never been convicted of any infamous or heinous crime, and 3. 
has, or whose ancestor through whom membership is claimed, has never voluntarily borne arms against the government of the United States. Associate membership is available to men who do not have the ancestry to qualify for hereditary membership, but who demonstrate a genuine interest in the Civil War and agree to support the purpose and objectives of the SUVCW. Auxiliary organizations The Women's Auxiliary was organized in 1883, first in relation to the GAR. In 1894 it adopted the current name. Membership with the Auxiliary to the Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War is open to women who are lineal or collateral descendants of soldiers, sailors or Marines regularly mustered and honorably discharged from the Army, Navy, or Marine Corps of the United States of America during the War of the Rebellion 1861–1865 are eligible for membership in the ASUVCW. Additionally, membership is open to mothers, wives, widows, daughters and legally adopted daughters of Sons of Union Veterans of the Civil War Associate memberships are available to women who do not qualify through heredity but who demonstrate a genuine interest in the Civil War and can subscribe to the purpose and objects of the auxiliary. Junior membership is open to young ladies of at least eight years of age. In addition to the ASUVCW there are three other organizations which, with the SUVCW and ASUVCW, comprise the Allied Orders. The other organizations are the Daughters of Union Veterans of the Civil War, the Ladies of the Grand Army of the Republic and the Women's Relief Corps. See also Military Order of the Loyal Legion of the United States Sons of Confederate Veterans Sons of the American Revolution